coming up on episode 183 of Creative Writing, I'm talking all about audiobooks. I can't go back to sleep, it's almost light. These restless thoughts have kept me up again tonight. Hello and welcome to Create If Writing. This is the podcast for you, an author who wants to sell more books without being smarmy. And I'm your host, Kirsten Oliphant. I'm so glad that you're here, whether this is your first or 183rd time listening to the podcast. And this week, I am going to share some of my thoughts about audiobooks and this exciting, interesting landscape uh, that we have. And uh share kind of the experience of just launching my very first audiobook. So uh, yeah, and I'm going to have a lot of links to other resources because as I said, I'm just launching my first audiobook. Um, there are a lot of people who've been doing this a lot longer than I am. So I'm kind of sharing from the perspective of if you are like me where you're on the fence about getting into audio, I want to share some pros and cons and tips and things you need to know about the landscape. But also I'm going to be linking to a lot of people who have really informative posts, especially about what's going on right now, um, you know, in 2020 with audiobooks and that current landscape, because some things have changed a lot. So you can find the show notes if you go to creativewriting.com slash 183 for episode 183. And as always, if you want these kinds of links delivered straight to your inbox, you can go to creativewriting.com slash quick fix to subscribe to my weekly newsletter that comes out on Fridays with resources links and tips, and also it's short, hence quick fix. Okay, so let's, uh, let's talk audiobooks. Um, this is something, you know, I've been podcasting now for I think five years. And, uh, you know, I got into podcasting because I'd been blogging. Well, there's a whole long story about it, but I'd been blogging and the blogging landscape was really crowded and I was really looking for something different. And, you know, audio has been talked about as the future and the now and, and, you know, it's so much less crowded and it is really crowded now, both if we're talking about audiobooks and podcasts, but in terms of numbers, you know, there is a big shift happening where a lot more people are consuming things, uh, via audio. And I think the, you know, whole COVID-19 thing has had an impact because I know some people are saying they're listening more, but a lot of people are listening less because they don't have their commute to work. Um, And, you know, hopefully we'll be getting back to some semblance of safety and normalcy sometime and that will pick back up. But I do know, um, I've heard, you know, anecdotally, this is not research and numbers, but anecdotally, I've heard that people are not listening as much to audiobooks because that, again, that time where they used to listen is gone. Um, I've been listening a little more because I uh, have been taking long walks. And so I've been listening to some audiobooks because it's either that or I'm reading while I'm walking, which means I'm not <laughs> looking where I'm going, uh, which I still do. And so far, so good. But uh, one of the two for me. But in any case, audio is on the rise. And people always talk about it being on the cutting edge. But there's a lot of drawbacks to this. And it's really a lot harder for an indie author to do audiobooks than it is to do ebooks. So I want to talk about that so that you can kind of go in with a little bit more knowledge. And again, we're not getting into the, any of the tech stuff. And I will have links to lots of people who um, know more and have been in this landscape for longer than I have. But I want to start with talking about the differences between producing an audiobook and an ebook, um, not the technical differences, but the differences that are going to probably impact you as an indie author. Um, the first is that the cost of producing one is higher. The cost of producing an audiobook is much higher than producing an ebook, and yet your royalties are lower. Um, and in fact, as we'll get into when we talk about ACX, they might be much lower. Um, there's a much higher level of tech needed. So if you're stressed out by the idea of um, putting together an ebook and formatting and all that, which I know can be very stressful, uh, audiobooks are just like a whole nother playing field. So there's that. Um, you also can't set the price. And so, you know, where uh, for me, the thing that really was different um, about looking at audiobooks, and one reason I hesitated so long, because I could have been putting them out a couple of years ago. The reason I hesitated was uh, as an indie where I'm used to having so much control. You know, there's tons of cover artists from, you know, $50 to $5,000 or whatever you want to pay. Um, But you can control that choice. There are formatters, there are free formatters, there are paid formatters, there are all these different options that you have for formatting. 
when we're talking about eBooks. There's different price levels when it comes to um, editing and proofing and the kinds of editing and proofing that you need. You have all this control. You can set your price. You can do all of these different things. And so um, there's sort of like the spirit of the indie author that's used to having all the control and making all the choices. And audiobooks really take a lot of that away from you because there, there's not going to be as much of a range um, of options for pricing. There just isn't. Um, and uh, you, again, can't ch- necessarily choose your price depending on where you're putting your audiobook and your royalty rate's much lower. So it feels like you're paying more, you're doing more work and you're not having the control and you're getting less out of it. And so um, that, you know, on the outset, you know, we've got this whole thing where audio is the future and then at the same time, but also here <laughs> it's gonna be a lot harder and more expensive and you don't have as much control. Um, And so again, this is why I've kind of hesitated. So there are some different options when it comes to audiobooks. Um, I'm not trying to dissuade you from doing it. I'm just letting you know, like, this is just the reality if you're going into this, because people talk, I hear all this talk all the time, audiobooks are the future. But then when you get into it, it's really overwhelming. And and it can be very frustrating. I find it very frustrating. Um, So I want to talk a bit about um, some of the things that have been going on in 2020 with Um, ACX and talk a little bit about distribution. So with audiobooks, um, Audible is the big name that we know. And it, you know, is Amazon's baby, um, where you pay per month and you get like one credit. And so, you know, the deal is with ACX is that it's, it's the one that most people use. It's the most popular. It's the one most people have heard of, but there's some other ones that are on the rise that do a lot of distribution. I love that draft to digital has partnered with find away voices and they do a lot of distribution for other places. And, um, I think it's from BookBub, but there's a new, um, kind of discount audiobook place called chirp where, um, if you have your book on audiobook on sale, you can submit it to chirp and get some more downloads. But that means you have to control the price. So the thing is this, ACX is um, a distributor that works with Audible, and it's the one we hear about, but they have two options when you're putting an audiobook together, okay? So if you actually want to um, make more money with ACX, you can go exclusive with them and get 40% royalties of whatever price they set, but that's a seven-year contract. Now, after a year, if you're unhappy or whatever, you can choose to take your book out and request that. And for the most part, they've been granting that. But as we'll go <laughs> deeper into this, uh, I don't know that I would trust them. So that's a seven-year contract. And if you're doing, um, well, I'll get back to royalty share in a second. But if you're doing something like royalty share to pay for it, where you and the narrator share the royalty to help offset the costs, you have to do exclusive. If you're doing exclusive, um, that means you can't use Findaway Voices or any of the other distribution. You can't sell it direct on your site or any of the other options that you have. It has to just be through ACX. Now you can be, um, go through ACX and have your book on Audible and not be exclusive. And then you're going to be getting a 25% royalty. Um, just for the moment, they've also given an extra 5% um, royalty because of COVID, which is nice, but they've done some other things that are less nice. Um, to do that. So you have that choice, whether you go direct and upload, um, you know, right through ACX and their dashboard and just be on Audible, or if you're going to be non-exclusive with them, and then you can be there however long you want. You can have your book on Findaway, you can set your price, and there's some different options that you have. And I'll link to, um, I think there's some posts that talk about different ways that you can do that. I really hate the idea of being exclusive because seven years, so much has changed. You know, think about tech and how much it's changed. Right now, Audible's the monster, you know, and ACX really has kind of a stranglehold, but in seven years, so much tech could change. A lot of things could change. I don't like being beholden to them. Now, when I launched my audiobook, and we'll get into now some of the changes for ACX, I had planned to go exclusive because one of the things that ACX has done in the past is they've provided 100 free codes where you can give them out and people can download your book from Audible with this free code. And what happens is you actually get paid (laughs) as though they bought it. So you're going to get that this is only if you're exclusive with you would get that 40% royalty rate. So a lot of people were help offsetting the cost of this of putting together an audiobook. And that was sort of my plan. There are a lot of different groups where you can do this and it benefits, you know, it seems like, wow, this is a trick, but this is something ACX set up and it benefits them because what it does is it gets a lot more people hooked on their platform, right? So in a way, you're promoting them as much as you're promoting yourself. So this was something a lot of people were doing, but what started happening is um, 
and, and I don't know the details, I don't know the names or anything like that, but there were some scammy people who were um, abusing this. And so for me, if they provide the tools, it's not abuse to pass those out to listeners and get paid for it because that's what ACX set up. But what was happening is there were a lot of people setting up really scammy, not real audiobooks, getting the codes and getting paid um, for for kind of nothing. And it was like a very, from what I've heard, again, I didn't go deep into it. And, you know, I sometimes just don't want to know who's doing this, but there were even people teaching about it. So ACX found this out and they've now taken that away which was really unfortunate because um, I did not do royalty share. I planned to do, I'd always wanted to go non-exclusive, but because of the codes, I was like, look, I don't want to have to pay. Um, it ended up being $1,300 to produce my audiobook. And I used someone kind of on the lower end of the spectrum. It was $150 per finished hour. Um, and then I paid another 100 for someone to go listen to the files because I don't have time for that. And I also find myself self-editing all the time because after it's done, you need to make sure it matches up with the... Um, actual ebook so that it'll whisper sync. So those two things will be linked um, on Amazon. Anyway, so it ended up being $1,300. And uh, I had planned to help offset the cost through those codes. And of course, as my book is in production, ACX announced, and this is the big thing, that they're not doing that anymore because of the scammers, that it was too much abuse of the system. And so now if you're exclusive with them, I think they give you 25 codes, but you don't get paid for them anymore. So you only get 25 free codes. So if you're trying to get reviews for your audiobook, because that was really the goal, right, is to get reviews. Um, the bon bonus is you're getting the money and ACX and Audible are benefiting because people are signing up for Audible and staying on that platform. Um, but now you're not getting paid for those codes. So now that was taken away. So <laughs> big hit to my wallet and my whole plan of offsetting costs. And so that really has changed things a lot. And I'm going to link to a video from a friend of mine, L Lorena Hoops, and she is both an author and a narrator. And so she talks about how this is going to really impact the people trying to do royalty share because the narrators also got codes. And so they could help even though they weren't getting paid as much up front. Because when you choose to have a book narrated, you can pay per finished hour, which means you're just paying out of pocket like I did, or you can do a royalty share. And the royalty share is only if you're exclusive with ACX. And it means that you are paying them less because they're going to share the royalties with you for the sales. So they're more motivated to make sales. Now, the reality is this, you know, narrators are not building platforms the same way authors are. And so they may not have a great sort of, you know, launch plan of how they're distributing these codes. Some narrators I see doing this, but not a lot, but they still got codes. And so it was beneficial to them to share those codes as well, because they're getting royalty shares from the free code payment. But now that's gone. So it's going to be a lot harder for authors to find royalty share narrators. Um, and it's also, you know, a lot more people I think are going to be going wide. And so I actually in the middle of my um, setting things up. The only reason, again, I went exclusive was for that 40% and the codes that I was going to use to offset my costs. When that went away, I emailed ACX and said, hey, I don't want to be exclusive anymore. My book's in production. And so it was a huge kerfluffle, but I'm finally not exclusive. Uh, my book just went live on Audible, but I have to get it up on the other sites. Um, and I'm planning to do that through Findaway. So I already have the files. I paid the narrator. She was wonderful. Um, and now I have that. But, you know, this has really changed the landscape. And I think it's going to have a lasting impact. Now, for me, it stinks, because again, I had my whole plan in place to help offset this cost. And it's not that I can't afford it. But but it is just a big chunk of change. And from most of the authors, I know they're not getting the money back for the audiobooks they produce for a couple of years sometimes. So it's not, um, you know, unless they were really getting rid of all those codes. And I know a few people who were able to to find places to get rid of those codes and were really their books were paying almost for themselves. But um, for the most part, this is kind of a long game. And when it's that much money up front, a long game is hard for a lot of indie authors who are bootstrapping. So the ACX changing um, changes this year are really going to impact, I think, more people going wide in their distribution and using more sites like Findaway Voices, which I appreciate because as someone who, you know, I I am exclusive with most of my eBooks on Amazon um, through Kindle Unlimited. And I'm doing that, you know, really because that's where most of my audience is and I make like 80% of my income. Long game plan, I would love to not be owned by Amazon because these changes just show ACX can jump in there and change everything and take away something that, you know, authors had been counting on and other authors were scamming on. So um, that's, 
you know, I'm happy. Like I would like to see the landscape change where more people are not using Audible and are using other things. And I think that's starting to happen. But again, this is a long game. So that's kind of the the overall point um, that I want to make is that if you're planning to do audiobooks, th- know that it's not a quick thing. It's a very expensive upfront thing. Even if you're doing royalty share and can find someone who will still do that with you, whatever your plan is, it's still going to be pretty expensive for you. Um, and you may not get that money back right away. So you're really investing in your future. And, and that's not a bad thing to do, but just realize it's not so easy. Now, I do know more people um, who are starting to do it themselves. And I want to talk just for a minute and we'll kind of close out on this on should you DIY? <laughs> should you DIY an audiobook? And for the most part, I'm going to tell you don't, don't do it. Um, and there's a couple reasons for this. Um, and there are exceptions. I'll, I'll talk about that too. But the reasons that I would say not to do this, um, like I said, there's a higher level of tech, even if you're not recording it yourself, um, just even getting all the stuff done, like it, it kind of fried my brain a little bit. It's fine. You can do it. There's just some things you need to do. But um, audio editing is like a pain. It's, it's not easy. Um, you know, you have to really learn it. And if you're paying someone to edit, like I was talking to, um, you know, there's a range of prices for that. But if you're going to record it yourself and then pay to edit, thinking about your time and plus the amount you're paying that person to edit, probably you'd be better off just paying finding a narrator. There are narrators um, usually between um, the, on the low end, you'll find like $100 per finished hour. And so depending like, you know, if you're writing on the shorter side, like I know some sweet romance authors who have, you know, 50,000 word books and they find someone who's $100 per finished hour. And so, you know, they're paying, you know, somewhere around like $500 to $1,000. So it's a lot less than, you know, what I paid. My books are a little bit longer um, than that. They tend to be so you, and, and I paid for someone who was $150 an hour because I really liked her voice. And again, I've had this plan of offsetting the cost. So um, th- that's the first thing is you might be kind of shooting yourself in the foot uh, in terms of the audio editing, because here's the thing. If you're not paying someone to do it, um, you need to know the exact things that ACX requires because they require a higher um, level of audio editing. And if it doesn't match, you won't get on Audible. Okay, they won't, ACX will be like, nope, whether you're trying to be exclusive or if you're trying to go through um, somewhere else, they're, they're not going to accept it. You have to have this high audio content because they want everything to be professional. A lot of people don't know how. In fact, I, I've recorded a couple audiobooks for myself and for other people and uh, nonfiction. And uh, I actually bought a course, like a pretty cheap course, but one that showed all the steps because it's a lot of tech involved. And I knew I could find it out myself, but I just went ahead and paid for a course um, and did that. And it, and it was, you know, like it wasn't, and I already knew audio editing from podcasting and it was still a higher level than what I'm doing here week to week. And all that to say that the editing yourself is going to take you a, a long time to figure out, or you're going to pay someone and between your time and their payment, you might as well pay someone else. The other thing to think about is if you're doing nonfiction, like I'm still planning to possibly do some nonfiction audiobooks of my own. And I've also debated about doing um, some of my fiction and I have kind of practiced and listened. But when people listen to audiobooks, they're used to a certain quality. They're used to voice actors. It's not just narration. You're not just reading your book. Okay, if you listen to audiobooks and it, it, if you don't, then you don't know what I'm talking about. I'm not a huge audiobook person. Um, but because I'm starting to move in this direction, I was thinking about, I did go ahead and get an audible descri- um, subscription and I've been listening to some audiobooks. and the narration really matters. Like I listen to samples and I will not buy one and use my credit on it. If it's not one where I like the narrator's voice, um, I'm not super picky, but like, if you're having a choice about it, like between this book or this book and the person's voice gets on your nerves, then well, I'm picking the one where they're not getting on my nerves. Um, it's voice acting. It's not just reading your book. Most of us can't do that. And this is why I've been practicing and kind of trying to decide if this is something I can pull off because I do know editing. I do know how to do it. Um, and also, is it worth my time? If this is a long game, would I be better off? I mean, maybe in the long run doing my own, uh, but but also like I could be writing a book in that, in that time and all the time that it takes, the hours it takes for me to record and edit, am I going to make that money back faster than writing another book? And then, you know, as I continue to make money, continuing to invest in audio. So I'm not really sure, but that's, um, you know, something to think about. So overall, this is a long game. 
it's a lot more tech, it's a lot more work, it's a lot more money for money that you're not going to see return on right away. And so you really have to have some money to invest, you have to know that it's a long game, and really be intentional about the way that you're handling um, promoting and everything else with your audiobook, because it's not the same as ebooks. It's a lot easier for an author to write an ebook, put it together, promote it and make money than it is with an audiobook. I don't want to tell you, tell you not to do it because it's, I, I think audiobooks are the future. I think that books are never going to go away though. So that's the thing. Audio is growing. Books aren't going away. So if you're bootstrapping and if you're on the fence and you're kind of getting that FOMO about it, realize it's a long game. Realize you may not make your money back right away and, and realize that if you're going to try to do it yourself, it's going to take a lot of time. Um, and it may take time away from writing. And if you don't know how to do it right, you're not going to get on ACX anyway. You're not going to be on Audible. Um, so these are my thoughts. The landscape has changed a bit with the ACX changes. Um, we'll see how that comes down. But I do think a lot more authors will be going wide. I don't know that that will have any impact on Audible because it's such a monster in terms of its size. But um, these are just some things to consider. So if you're thinking about audiobooks, either paying someone um, to, to narrate, if you're thinking about going exclusive with ACX or going wide, if you're thinking about doing it yourself, I hope that this kind of touches on some of those things for you as you try to navigate the landscape of audiobooks. So again, I'm leaving a lot of links in the show notes to people talking about this with more detail, more tech, but this is kind of an overview to help you kind of figure out should you or shouldn't you. Um, so head over to the show notes. You can go to creativewriting.com slash 183 for episode 183. And uh, yeah, I'm really, I'm hoping this is helpful for you if you're trying to figure out whether or not you should do this. Other things going on right now, I've got um, a workshop coming up on email marketing. You can go to creativewriting.com slash workshops. And I'm also um, putting together something called the Stay Home Story Summit, which is going to be amazing. Um, I've got 20 expert people coming in to talk about telling and selling your stories better. So we're going to talk about craft and promotion. And you can find out more about that if you go to creativewriting.com slash stay home. Totally free summit. Um, the workshop is paid uh, with replay, but the summit is totally free. Um, and it's happening in the month of May. Um, so definitely go check those out. A huge thank you to Jasmine Commerce of jasminecommercemusic.com for the tunes you hear playing on the show. Go check her out and let her know you came from here because she offers up the music for this podcast. Thank you so much for listening. And now it's time for you to go out and create content that you love and serve your people well. I